Hello, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Resurrect Auto's HQ. Today, guys, we are working on the Ford Focus 1 litre EcoBoost Cat N. So, yeah, the last time you saw this car, it was like parked right in the middle of the workshop, didn't drive, didn't run, well, it run, but didn't drive. Um, and it was suspension sort of issues and damage and stuff, and it, it was just it was just sitting there. So I've managed to get that done. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. But before I do, guys, I just want to quickly say a massive thanks to all you, the comments I was getting on last night's videos about the van um, and that that underneath damage. Um, yeah, it's a funny one that one because. You just, you just, I just don't know how it was done. It wasn't done on the, on the ramp. Someone did say to me it could have been done on the, on the lift and I was bringing it up and down. It wasn't done like that because I, I used blocks, rubber blocks to put underneath. Um, so it, 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 it didn't touch it. No way did that touch it. So that weren't that. It was something else. Um, but yeah, a lot of comments, guys, just saying that it was the um, DPF additive. and It's got a pouch inside the box and it squirts a little bit of that um, stuff that's in the pouch. Um, yeah, it's just really weird. I've never sort of come across it, never heard of it before, but it, yeah, it's, it's, got, it's definitely got something to do with, you know, get, getting that, um, keeping that DPF clean, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works. I'll have to look, look, look into it actually and find out a little bit more, do, do a little bit more digging, um, but it definitely needs to be resolved and I've definitely got to drop it have a look, see what the damage is. It could be, I, I don't know what it is. It could, it could be the pouch that's that's burst or or damaged. It could be the pump. There's a little pump on there as well on the, on the end. It could be that that's damaged. Um, I really don't know. It can only, it can only be those two things really because the actual casing is only a like a casing really, and it's casing the pouch. So if the casing was broke. It wouldn't leak because there's nothing. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, so it would only be the pouch that's split or the pump that's gone. If it was the pouch, I would assume that it, not unless it's gone before or at the damage at the crash. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever happens, guys, that's got to be dropped and we've got to sort it out. So, but that's that. This is this one liter Eco Boost. And I've got some really good news about this car as well. I managed to contact the previous owner. And yeah, <clears throat> I spoke to her. She said she's got a brand new spare key and all the booklets and all the service history to go with this car. Um, I said to her, look, I'm, I'll sort you out a few quid if you can send them over to me. I think she's the other side of London, southwest London somewhere. Um, and it's at her parents' house. She's going to go over there, have a look. See what she's got. She's gonna let me know what she's got, and then I'm gonna, you know, transfer some money, sort out a few quid, and she'll send them over to me. So what a result with that car as well. It, hopefully that's got a full service history. Um, if that has, yeah, unbelievable. Like the um, Bolingo, that's got all that service history and that key. It's just worth giving them a shout if you can contact them and find out the previous owner. It's worth giving them a shout. I know like that. When you're using Copart as an auction, you're not allowed to contact any previous owner and you can be banned for life for doing it. So be cautious of that. Uh, but where I go, there's nothing in it. No terms and conditions say that whatsoever. So we're able to contact um, previous owners and stuff like that. But a Copart, you're not allowed. Another reason why I don't use them. Anyway... So, guys, let's get into it. Let's have a quick walk around, and then we'll jump straight into it and start ripping this apart, and I'll tell you exactly what is going to happen and what the plan is for this car. Let's do this. Right, so, guys, just a quick run around, really, just to give you a quick um, plan of what we're going to do. So, first thing we're going to do is we need to jack it up and get rid of this wing, get that off, um, because I have got a replacement wing. Couldn't find one in colour, so I've got to paint it, basically. Um, black is an absolute killer to match, I've been told. Um, but I've got a new uh, OEM uh, uh, wing here that needs, uh, yeah, it needs prepping. 
and it needs um, primer and it needs some base coat and lacquer. So yeah, we've got a lot of painting to do on this car. Uh, I'm gonna give it a go myself. I'm gonna change that door completely because obviously I think what's happened on the front there is had a little whack there. It's jumped this door completely, apart from that scuff there, which I can get out, um, and then gone to this door and it's hit it, obviously bang, 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 hit it there and scuffed it there and then gone down the side. So, um, yeah, this door is going to be completely replaced. I think that'd be the best thing. Um, and then we'll just have to, you know, re re repair and repaint this, this arch. Um, and the bumper as well. I'm going to take both bumpers off, front and back, and then strip it right back, take all the grills off. That grill is going to be replaced because that's got a crack there, um, so I'm not going to put that back on. That's just broke, so there's no point. I might as well get another one. Um, so, yeah. It just, it's, just, it's just smashed. Like, literally, I could just pull it out. So... Um, so yeah, we'll replace that. And uh, everything else seems all right to be put back on. Like the spotlights are good, carriers are good. Uh, the, the thing at the bottom, the splitter, whatever, trim. So that's all good, because this is the facelift uh, version, 2016, on the Focus. Um, it's got these little, these little, see these little, little like bumps and stuff in the headlight, it looks pretty cool. But yeah, I think the headlights are okay, but I don't need I don't really know until we start stripping it down. But the plan is really is to take both bumpers off and spray them and the wing and spray it. And then anything else, we've got some damage. That's all okay. We've got damage at the quarterback here. We've got to look at, but we'll turn it around again on the back bumper. So I think we'll just have to re repaint the bumper complete. And we'll just see what it comes out like the paintwork really um we just i just don't know when it comes to painting <laughs> it's, i've never done black before um and yeah it's the first time for everything but i've got the paint uh, color for it basically um i use this company called uh, car color services um they're based over in romford so if you guys need any painting done um these these this company here is they're really really good um they've got a massive uh, little place over in romford um and they're really helpful and what they do for me i think they do it for around the area what they do is they come along uh they 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 pick up the samples so the, the um the petrol flaps and stuff like that you take them off uh you tell them what you want <clears throat> so this one is for the uh 66 plate citron bilingo and i've got 250 mil there because we've got a little bit of painting on, on both seals to do so 250 should be enough and this one is for the peugeot partner again we've got a little bit of pa uh, painting to do on the on the quarter 250 and this one is for the focus which i've got a liter of this <laughs> because i just didn't know how much painting we're going to be doing but it looks like quite a bit um don't forget as well. So when you when you mix you mix any these paints with this thinner, so it's one to one. So it's one whatever one one to one. So if I've got a liter there and I've got a liter here, so that's two liters of actual paint. But I'm not going to probably use that much. But we'll see. So yeah, just wanted to quickly explain that. Um, so we've got a lot of painting to do, but I'm up for it, guys. I'm really really up for it. I want to have a go. I want to try this. Um, and just see what it comes out like. But the first thing we need to do is, you know, start stripping it down. So I'll set you up. Let's start stripping this all down. Um, probably leave the bonnet on. We'll see. But let's definitely get that wing off, bumper off. And then we'll have a look to see if there's any more damage behind this wing. We don't know at the minute. I think it's okay. Don't forget this is a category N. So it should be non it should be non-structural. There should be no structural damage. But as we've seen in the other, <laughs> other vehicles that I do, they just don't categorise these right, do they? Let's be honest. Like, you know, I'm not saying anything that ain't the truth. The truth is they do not categorise these cars correctly and they get it wrong. That's the truth of it. Um, 
And it's pretty much, it's pretty bad, really. Let's be honest. They're, 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 that's, that's a pretty bad thing to do because they're wrongly categorizing cars and they've got a marker. Now, this has got a marker as a, as a cat N, but it could have had a marker as a cat S just because of what? Pictures that they're looking at? That doesn't, they, they should be pulling these apart. It, regardless of cost, regardless of what, whatever it, it time, doesn't matter. They, they, they should categorise these cars correctly every single time. And they're just not. Um, so, yeah, shame on you guys for doing that. Shame. <laughs> That's my rant over. Right, guys, let's set you up. Let's get the tripod up and running. <laughs> let's start stripping this down. Let's do this. Right, guys, moving along very nicely. So, yeah, just stripped it off, took the, both headlights out in the end just to check, just to have a look. You never know. I just wanted to check right behind the bumper and then if it else, just make sure all the plastics and stuff are good. Um, everything is obviously great this side, going round. You know, there's no brakes at all. Uh, there's no... Even this plastics and that's just, it's absolutely, well, that's actually broke off of there a little bit, but try and repair that. Um, so no crash bar damage, which is great. <laughs> so that hasn't been touched or hit. Uh, none of this has been broke. Um, it, it, is, it is exactly what it should be like. Um, the inner wing as well, absolutely fine. I did think it didn't hit it, but obviously just wanted to make sure and it hasn't, so that's great news. This, I think that's what the ECU is, actually. Plastic box cover. Uh, again, absolutely fine. No breaks, no nothing like that at all. No cracks, nothing. No, it's fine. So that's good. Um, 
I did I tell you about this tyre? I can't remember if I did or not. Um, basically, uh, there was, in the old alloy, there was a, there was a crack, wasn't there? And I had to get the wheel changed, which I found one. Um, I showed you, didn't I? And it was like, um, this was the old one. You see, there's a crack here. Look at that. Straight through split. So, yeah, I had the um, the tyre pressure monitoring valve, um, TPRS, I think it's called. To had that removed and had the original one on here fitted to that wheel. And then they put a new Michelin tyre on for me. So... Um, yeah, so that that was done. I can't remember if I explained that, but that's that's done now. Um, but yeah, going back to the uh, oh guys, I'm shattered already. It's a bit humid today, so I've got all the wing bolts off along the top. I've just got one to get off here, which is a bit crumpled because obviously the wing has been pushed in. So I need to sort of lever it back a little bit to be able to get to the bolt. And then there's two bolts here that go that way behind this moulding. But, you know, the car's up on, on, the, on the lift um, and it's holding the actual moulding off. Up, sorry. So now I'm going to have to move the car off the ramp, put it over there, drop the moulding, um, remove the two bolts off the, off the, off the, the wing um, and then put the moulding back in place just for now. And then I can put it back on the ramp. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of flaff, a little bit of messing around. But um, I'll stick you on the tripod. I'll show you me doing that uh, because I'm sure you'll be interested in me watching me doing that as well. Um, I am in, I am curious to see what service history I'm going to get with this car when it comes to um, the previous owner sending them to me. Um, I did speak to her. She's, you know, she seems a really nice uh, girl. So, uh she did tell me, I said to her, like, what happened with the accident? She went, well, um, me and a uh, electric gate um, didn't really see eye to eye. And I think the electric gate sort of come back on her or something, something happened. I'll get to the, I'll get, I'll get the full story, guys. And I'll let you know exactly what happened with this, with, with this accident, um, you know, and why, what happened with it. But yeah, hopefully we've got some good service history with it. And it's only just been serviced. Fingers crossed. I haven't got to do it, but we'll see. But for now, let's get this wing off. I want to get that removed. And then, um, yeah, we can carry on. So let's do this. So, guys, there we go. That is the wing off. Basically, yeah, what was stopping it was that trim along the back here, like a skirting. Oh, that's nice. Open the door wide now. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this, this skirting piece goes along and it covers up those two bolts over there where the wing is. So I just literally popped it off these little clips. Um, and then I was able to get to those two bolts, undo it. And then I'll just, I'll leave it like this for now. And then once we put the wing on, I'll um, I'll uh, I'll just pop it back on place. Yeah, it's just a skirting to go down the side, so I'll just leave that as it is. Right, so that's that. Next, I think is going to be the rear. So I'm going to spin the car round, drive it onto the ramp like that, so the back is here, um, and then remove the back bumper completely, and then we're going to have a look at these two rear arches on both sides. This side. Um, and this side. So yeah, 
I want to see what we can do with these, but I need to get this bumper off because they're being sprayed. Or do I want to leave the bumper on and spray the whole thing in like that? I don't know now. Um, the only trouble with that is that this this bit here is a bit, it's, it's all scuffy as well. So I really want to sort of just repaint the bumper completely. Um, just repaint it. But I've got, I have got to do some, do some paint work on these two rear arches. I can't find, I'd love to find a bumper in color. I just can't find it. So yeah, I think it's bump. I think it's bumper off. I think it's, I think you take the bumper off, spray that separately, then spray these these two rear quarters. Um, I'll take these lights out as well, so that the lights yeah won't get sort of painted up, sprayed when we do these quarters. We're gonna change that door. So yeah, this one's got a lot of work on this one, isn't it? A lot of work. But I'm up for it, guys. I'm up for it. So let me spin the car around anyway. Yeah, let's get cracking. Um, and let's get this bumper off. Start stripping the rear off. I want to take the mud guard, the, mud, the, 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 um, the wheel arches, both sides. They've got to come off as well because I want to be able to get to the other side to see if I can pull it out a little bit and have a little play around. So yeah, bear with me. I'll spin it around, put it on there. I'll set you up. Let's get cracking. Let's strip this down. Right, so there you go. Uh, all been stripped down. Both bumpers are off. I need to strip them down to get them painted and, and prepped or whatever. But um, <clears throat> yeah, you can see that uh, I was just cleaning around the areas where behind the light sits, basically because when I'm taping up, uh, because I've got a this is this is this part's got to be painted. This this got to be blended. I think into the the bumper i'm not sure if i'm going to be putting the bumper on then then doing this corner i'm not really not sure guys i think i want to do that separate i'm going to do the bu bumper separate to the, this quarter i think um yeah that's how i'm going to do it so so what i need to do is i need to tape off all these plastics and stuff tape it all off um mask it all off and to do that it's got to be wiped clean-ish enough to get the tape to stick. So that's what I was doing. I was cleaning the areas that I need, I need to sort of get, get stuck, um, which is all right now. I think it's done both sides. Uh, and then we could do the repairs and then we could do the painting. This side 
it's not as bad as the other side. I've took the, the wheel arch liners off as well, so I can just get to a little bit of a tapping going in there, but I don't think I'm going to get that there because it's got, it's got like a double skin, normal stuff really. Uh, and it, it starts, the, the double skin starts there and then the double skin goes up on both sides. So I need to get here really. So what I might have to do is we might have to just grind that back and then get the welder on this part here and then gradually just pull that out um, and pull it out the best we can. This part here, the bottom is absolutely fine. It's just when it gets to about here. So that's all good. To there, it's got like a little bit of a dink. You can see it because obviously it's not flush with the door. You can just see it kicking out. So that needs a little bit of a pull out there and then stops about there. So it's not a lot, but I don't just want to put filler over it. I need to try and pull it as much as I can um, to save on the amount of filler. I think I've got to fill it no matter what, but it's it's all about reducing the amount of filler that you use. Um, I think that's best practice, really. You've got a little bit of a dink here, so we might just have to pull that out a little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it from there. Um, so, yeah, so both rear quarters have got damage. Um, like I said to you before, we're going to change the door, so I ain't got to worry about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, just cleaned up this, this area as well. So I'm probably going to go sort of, I don't know really, up to about there, I suppose, just painting this, just painting it all in. Um, so there we go. We're getting there, guys. We are getting there. Um, the other thing as well I'm going to do, I think it's best practice, whilst I've got these rear lights off, um, I think a few of you are going to know what I'm going to say. It's worth just masticking these vents up so i'll pull them out i'll remastic them push them back in place so there's a nice bead of like mastic on the inside and that will just help i know this is the 2016 so the rubbers are probably not perished as much as like 2011s 2010s or whatever but i think whilst we're at this stage it's best just to get a bit of mastic around these vents uh, there and there both sides i'll just do both sides uh, before I put the bumper on and then it's just another little thing for the new owner um, peace of mind that they're not going to get water going inside the boot um, at, at a later date so I'm just trying to prevent um, problems whilst we're at this stage a lot of people won't bother a lot of people a lot of body shops and that just will just do the work and throw it together but I like to go a little bit more um, a little bit over the top really a little bit more than most so you guys know that you've been watching me for a long time so there we go. That's the plan. I think, really, we can sort of just start working on the front, um, not the front, the rear. Start getting this pulled out here a little bit. I'm going to get the polisher quickly. I'm just going to polish this up to see what that looks like. Because the actual damage on this bit here um, is actually over here. Like there's a dent there, dent there, dent there. And, it, and then it stops about here. So this part's just scuffed. And if we can't get it out, then we'll, I think we're going to take it to paint anyway. Just going to bring it to the smallest point, which is here. And then we'll just feather it. This is all good. So we're just going to sort of paint it to about here. And then we're going to um, use fade-out thinners to, uh, to fade it out to about here. Because this is the thinnest point, really. Um, and then we'll just go up to probably about there. Cover the, that flap. Go right round. Go to about here. Go to about there and do undo all this back quarter down to here. So yeah, that's the plan. But again, I don't really want to be using if any filler really on this back quarter if I can help it. Um, but again, we'll see because it's double skinned. I'm not going to be able to get it like the double skin starts there and then it goes up double skin. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna I'll, I'll try and use the um, the uh, dentless paint uh, pulling uh, technique where I glue the tabs on. I'll try and use that. Um, we'll see what it looks like and see what it comes out like, but we might have to put a bit of filler on it, guys. We will see. So, yeah, there we go. That's the plan. Um, so, bear with me. I'll set you up. Let's get 
cracking with these repairs on that side and uh, on this side. And we'll just see if we can get these rear quarters looking a bit better before, before any filler. So let's get set up. Let's do this. Right, guys, <laughs> I think I've impressed myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, it's not perfect. I'm not saying it is, um, but it's definitely a lot better than what it is. Oh, it's a lot better than what it was. Um, but you can still see there's like a little ripples and bits and pieces in it. So it's not, it's not perfect, but I managed to get... A lot of that top part there, that, that's all been pulled out apart from a little piece here. Got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a dent there. And uh, this, this it's really, really hard because obviously you've got this line that goes around the arch to try and keep. And it's so difficult to get to get right. But I think that's going to be, um, that's going to be it for the actual trying to pull it out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it all back, uh, flatten it all back, and then we're going to hit it with some filler. Just a little bit, just around that little little line there that goes round, and then I want to flick that up a little bit like that with a bit of filler. And then I think that's us done. Um, again, it's just, you know, I've just done that and pulled it just to, you know, so that there's not a, as much filler. That's That's the kind of aim, really is to try and get it as best you can um with the with the um with the tabs pulling the glue um and I think I've done that I'm just going to be the trouble is what I'm I'm just going to be fighting all day with this if I keep doing this with the with the thing I'm just going to be fighting it all day and um there will still be ripples no matter what I do um I think so yeah I'm going to rub it all back now and then we're going to hit it with a bit of filler and then we're going to leave it, that can dry, and that can be, you know, you could get that ready now uh, to be painted once the filler's done. We can rub that filler down, give it a primer, and then it's ready for, for painting. And then we're going to jump on this side. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to use the welder on this one just to see if I can get it e any better. Um, possibly, when, you know, we're painting this side. Let's be honest, we're painting it. So possibly the the actual spot welder might have been a little bit better as well. I could have got it a little bit better. Um, but, you know, I just think it's not that bad this side. So we'll just give that a little fill and then it's ready for paint. So, yeah, let me, um, yeah, let me set you up, guys. Let's get this rubbed down, a little bit of filler, and then we can start on the other side and see how that goes. <laughs> so yeah, let's do this.
Right, there we go. All the filler is done. So I'm gonna leave it like that, and then, yeah, we'll come back to that another time, and we'll just see what if it needs another going over. Yeah, you just never know. But you just, just don't want to sort of push it too much. Do you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> you don't want to overload it, overdo it, just do it in sections and stages, and then just see what it comes out like. But so far, so good. Yeah, looking good. Right, let's leave that, guys. Let's jump onto the other side. And we're going to start working on this bit here. Um, like I said to you before, I'm not bothered about the door. I'm just worried about this, getting this back out. It's not that bad. Like, this part here ain't that bad. It's just got a little bit of a crease in there. So if I can try and get the spot welder on that and then just weld uh, a wriggle bar to that or something and just sort of gradually pull it out and make that, you know, a bit straighter, yeah... I just don't want to put the, just put filler over that. It just seems too much, like build up with the filler. So let's have a go. Let's get it out, and then we'll go over it with a bit of filler afterwards. So I'll set you up, guys. Let's keep going, and let's do this. We've got to do this as well. Rub that down. Don't necessarily think filler, but I just think it needs to be rubbed down. I think that's pretty straight. Just need to get that down a bit better, and then we'll just sort of hit that with the with probably with the the primer. Um, yeah, we'll hit it with a primer. So yeah, let's do this guys. Let's keep going. Right, okay, guys, we are moving along very nicely now. I've done this filler, a little bit on that corner there, um, and then I've done this bit here. You saw me put a straight edge ruler against that side, and then just a little bit of filler just to bring it out, to bring it straight. It does need a little bit more there, so I will build it out. But the other thing I've just realised, you know what? If I'm painting this quarter here, why don't I just try and repair the door here and here, a little bit of filler each side, yeah? And then just paint the door, like, just tape it off of here, from this door, and just, just spray the door in, and just follow it across with a quarter. I might as well try that, really. So, yeah, let me set you up. We'll put a little bit more filler on this side of the door, a little bit more filler here, and then we'll see what it's like. So, let's crack on. Let's go for it.
Right, okay, we are definitely moving along now. Um, as you can see, I've just done that red line to give me that guide to see what it is. If, you, if you're wondering how I got that red line, um, I measured from the bottom up, the same measurement on the other side, on the other arch, you've got that line, which is 45 millimeters from there upwards, measured to 45 millimeters, and then, um, yeah, made it go round. So <clears throat> just needs a little bit more rubbing down. I've done a little bit more filler and we'll go that way. We'll feather it back that way and then flatten it this way. And that should leave us a nice little line. It's not a massive gradient to be honest with you. Like the other side, I'll show you in a second, but I think we'll be good to go there. Um, and then we'll just paint this whole quarter. We'll tape it off of here. Might as well take it right down to here. We'll tape off this door. Um, and then we'll take it right up probably to about there in the middle of that there if we can um, with the paint probably and then we'll just feather it back with some clear lacquer um, and some fade out thinners and then just bring it around and then obviously we'll just take we'll just paint the whole petrol flap and then just paint this whole back court bit here all the way down Hopefully, you know, we're going to get a good match with the colour, fingers crossed. But if we don't, you know, it's going to the paint shop because I can't leave it. So, but I am willing to give it a try. I know there's a lot of work just for, just for having to have a little try. But I think um, yeah, whatever happens, this is what's got to be done at the body shop. So if I can do it before it goes to the body shop, if the paint don't come out right, um, fingers crossed, guys, that I can get this good. So, but yeah, definitely why I thought about changing this door and spending, um, I think it was £130 and it was just for the bare, bare door. So you can imagine that all the strip down I've got to do to change over all the bits and pieces, the glass, the mechanism, the handle, all the bits and pieces, the wiring loom, all got to be changed over when all I've really got to do is do a little bit of filler there, uh, rub it down and then paint the whole you know, the bottom of the door, all the way across, uh, all this quarter, we'll just paint it all the way through, all the way through, all the way around. Um, yeah, and just sort of, just sort of paint that whole back quarter of the door. I think, I think it just makes more sense to try and repair and paint the door I've got. So, so yeah, I, I actually made that decision quite a, <laughs> quite a, um, um, it was just a split decision, really. I didn't really sort of think about it before. But then when I sat here thinking, look, I was, I was putting a bit of fill on this and getting this sort of prepped ready. And I was thinking, why don't I just repair the door? It just makes sense. So there we go. That's what we're going to do. Um, but unfortunately, guys, we have run out of time. It's just one of them things. Just time sort of just shoots away from you. Um, and yeah. We'll just uh, we'll just carry on in the next video with this. I'm not sure what we're doing tomorrow yet because I'm still waiting for the parts to come from the Eco Sport. If they come today, this afternoon, I'll get a call or a message from Fords that the parts are in. Um, I will collect it and we'll be doing that tomorrow. If not, I think we might be doing the Peugeot Partner van tomorrow. Starting that one, same thing. Take the door off, do the repair. Uh, pull it all out um, and then start the filler and stuff like that. So, yeah, but um, good progress. Good progress so far. It's all been stripped down. So, yeah, apart from a bit of paintwork, really, there's not much There's not much to do. Bits and pieces, cleaning, stuff like that, just tidying up. But, yeah, not much to do on this one now. I knew it was, I knew it was going to be a lot of time just doing the bodywork painting and, and and that sort of stuff so i knew there was gonna be a lot of time in that and it's going well so far drop me a comment guys if you think um i'm doing all right <laughs> and i made the right decision about the door i think you'll agree with me just get it repaired and paint myself um instead of changing it over just i think that just makes sense but yeah drop me a comment guys if you've got anything to say about this video or anything that i'm doing um, in uh, the workshop and um, yeah take care and I'll see you in the next one